Hi everybody, if you know me, then you know I like to use my 3D printer whenever I have the opportunity to do so. And I've even done a few different videos here on this channel in the past, and today I want to show you how you can improve your workflow and solve big problems right here in the workshop using a 3D printer. Before we get started, I want you to know you don't need to know how to design anything to make good use of a 3D printer. Uh, most of the stuff I'm going to show you here, you can download for free or at least some form of it. I did design some of the things that I'm going to show you here today as well. I will link everything that I have here in the description below and you can check it out. All right, so up first is this blast gate. Now, this is not your typical blast gate, as you can see. Uh, this is a ball valve version of a blast gate, and I always wanted these for the shop, but they were always pretty expensive but I was able to find a file that was free to download. It was actually more than one version, um, but you're gonna need to assemble it. Now to assemble it, you're gonna need to use certain screws and most modelers will use metric screws. Assembling this thing is a piece of cake. You're gonna need some CA glue and the activator spray really does speed things up. Uh, once you um, glue those pieces in together, you can really fly from there as long as you have the right hardware you're gonna need screws these are m4 screws and there are a few different lengths that you're gonna need I would recommend buying a kit like what I have uh, because that way anytime you're gonna be assembling anything that you 3d print you're pretty much all set with the sizes that comes with the kit I will link it below in the description I did buy it on Amazon so it's it's pretty accessible now I did attach this bracket just because I wanted to show you the assembly but this should go on the wall or wherever you're gonna mount it first and then you can attach this to it so I'm gonna take this off I'm gonna show you how I install it if you're gonna use a drill on this like I am make sure you set your torque very low because these things can snap pretty easily This is silicone tape. A while back, I saw somebody using this on their channel for all the duct work for the dust collection. It's awesome because it's not sticky until it makes contact with itself. It's elastic, which means you can get a really tight fit and it's airtight. But if you have to make some changes, you can just easily cut it off and you won't have any residue of glue or anything like that. If you want to check it out, I'll also link that down below in the description. If you have any ideas on things that I should include in the next 3D printing video, please share them in the comments because I would love to get some new ideas, things I haven't thought of yet. This next one is a problem that I know a lot of you have because the DeWalt DW735 is the most popular thickness planer on the market. It's amazing except one silly feature that doesn't make any sense. The dust collection here the way it's situated is always in the way when you're trying to run a board through. To remove the current dust collector attachment, there's actually a pin right here, and if you press and then twist, it comes right off. And it can be easily replaced with this one because it's set up the same exact way. They also, by the way, do have a left and right version depending on how your shop is situated, and it will move your hose over far enough where it won't interfere with your board. Now, when you want to run your boards through, you're never going to have this problem again. No interference at all. Up next are these drill holders. These are meant to be installed underneath things like cabinets. That's where I'm putting mine. Uh, this was my early version of it, and it was a prototype, and it was okay. It just wasn't that strong, but I redesigned it, and this is much beefier, much stronger, and it's going to last forever. Be careful installing these. I actually broke my first one uh, because I over-tightened. So maybe start with the drill and then finish by hand. There are plenty of free downloads that accomplish the same thing, but I just love the way this looks. This is so cool, so clean. Up next are these drill bit holders. Now these are awesome because they attach to your drill, which means your drill bits will always be close to where you're gonna need them. Now these particular ones are for DeWalt drills, but not all DeWalt drills. They fit on my impact driver, but not on my atomic drills. So you're gonna have to search the ones that would fit for your particular model drill. This is my take on sandpaper organization. I really like these because these are trays that are stackable and there's a recess here which allows you to set them on top of another tray and they won't slide off so that way they don't fall over. They're perfect for putting on top of a workbench and you can stack them as high as you like or in my case I like to keep them inside of drawers. 
If you like to buy your sanding discs in bulk, I made a larger version of these. And it's also good for something that I wasn't planning on. I have a drum sander and when I switch out the sandpaper, sometimes I don't know what to do with it and it just so happened to fit perfectly in here. Since we're on the topic of sandpaper organization, this is my solution to organizing any kind of disc that you would use on your angle grinder. I happen to use them for the sanding discs. It allows me to categorize them and keep everything nice and neat. If you work with bar clamps, this is gonna make glue ups a lot easier. I designed these to solve a few problems. First, bar clamps are not as stable. They tend to fall over when you're working with big boards. It's kind of annoying. Second, it's also nice to be able to access the boards from underneath without having to lift the entire work surface up. These elevate everything, so if you need to, for example, dry glue, it's pretty easy to do without moving anything. And third, when your bar clamps are elevated, you have a little bit more clearance for tightening everything up. These holders are for your quick release clamps. What if you're gluing up something smaller and pipe clamps would be an overkill? Well, these are gonna make it easier for you to use other clamps to do the same thing. Once you set the clamp in the slot of the holder, it's very stable and you can do your glue up. And the nice thing about this is that it's elevated enough where you can grab the trigger without it interfering with your table surface. These holders are a little bit smaller, but it's the same idea, except that they're for F-style clamps. Once you put those clamps in the slot, they're stable and you can do your glue up. There's a lot of useful prints out there for people who have track saws. This track right here is a Powertech track. This is the same exact thing as a Makita track and a Festool track. So a lot of the stuff out there is going to be compatible for these three brands here. Most important thing when you have a track is to protect the edges. If you damage the edges, you're gonna have a problem with it. So I found somebody who designed these edge covers. They slide right onto the edge perfectly and you always have a protected track. I've noticed a lot of people starting to hang their tracks on walls and even on garage doors. These holders will allow you to do that. I am not gonna hang mine on a garage door because my door is pretty new. Uh, but I will show you how it installs on a wall. Before you install this particular one, you're gonna need to assemble it. It's gonna require one screw. An M6 screw is gonna be the best size screw for this. I'm using an M5. Uh, and a little CA glue to prevent it from loosening up should hold, hopefully. Uh, if not, we'll figure out another solution. This is gonna make things a lot easier when you're using your track saw and you want a perfectly square cut. This slides on right to your track and it's a very snug fit, so it's not gonna wobble or move or throw your cut off. Once it's on, you can line it up and you can guarantee that your cut will be 90 degrees. Let me show you how it works. I need to take a little bit off the bottom of this door, so here we go. Everything in this video is linked below in the description. If you want to support my channel, the files that I designed are going to be available for sale. And I may from time to time sell some of the physical items, but you have to check the description and see if they're available. Yep, that's square. You can hear it rubbing on the edge there. Well, it's time for me to get going. I hope this one was helpful. Uh, let me know what you think about it in the comments, and I will see you soon in the next one. Take care, everybody.